Okay, so I <clears throat> think it's I think it's really time or getting close to that time I feel it sort of in my spirit here lately. Especially some you know, some people we've been talking to, we've been having Bible study and uh everything. But uh I'm really thinking it's time getting close for some really out of the box preaching. Um, maybe teaching when, when you know the chance arises but me for me uh, being an evangelist and everything uh, preaching uh, but you know doing that you have to be careful and everyone you know especially guys that, that are evangelists and stuff like that you know this because you know you get invited to a church or you go to a church just to visit or something and the pastor uh, kindly you know you know when you show up or something like that and you know you weren't really invited you just kind of felt led to go visit that church and he kindly offers you the opportunity to get up behind the pulpit you don't want to <sighs> you don't you don't want to shock therapy everyone in the church that night but um you know there's just some things that i believe in the wake of everything that's going on these days people in the the area of spiritual warfare end time events but not everyone wants to hear that uh, it scares people um, and I'll just say this and uh, I, and please I hope no one takes this the wrong way I don't mean it the wrong way but in a lot of ways when you talk about certain events and you make a connection a biblical biblical connection I can talk, to something that's going on in the world uh, not everyone is going to see that point of view and uh, like I said you just don't you don't want to do that uh, as I think I mentioned this before a uh, preacher um, a couple of years ago kind of told me uh, you know <clears throat> kind of quizzed me about because uh, he didn't really know a lot of what I preach but he he talked to my pastor and uh, apparently told him, yeah, that I'd studied prophecy and a bunch of other stuff. And he'd ask me, so I hear you're kind of into prophecy and studying that. And I said, well, yes, you know, kind of. I said, I enjoy it. And I, you know, Book of Revelation, you know, and Isaiah, Ezekiel, Daniel, and all that, and kind of that. And, he said, well, that's fine. He said, but, but you got to be careful. He said, and one thing he said, I'll, yeah, I'll caution you about. He said, when you go visit a church, and he said, he said, don't get up behind the pulpit and start preaching prophecy. He said, unless, unless the pastor gives you leave to do it. He said, you get up behind the pulpit, you preach, you know, preach what you're, what you're led, led to preach. He said, but he said it needs to be something directed more closely to biblical, you know, like salvation issues and stuff like that. So, I mean, I agree with that because, like I said, you don't want to, you know, you want to get invited back and you don't want to, you know, I'm not up there trying to shock therapy people or scare people out of their wits and say this is coming this is coming look at this this is what's happening that's not my that's not my goal you know being kind of an all in compass you know in in christendom world watchman like many of these other people are that you see something you say hey look this is going on you know and this could be happening what we're looking at you know i try to bring stuff to the table when i see it just like we were talking about the, the CERN particle collider I think in the last video I did yesterday I said this could be what's going on here and I've talked about like that especially in the early days I haven't 
brought out a lot in my videos about stuff like that in the last little while because uh, well just for that reason I didn't want to people to think that I was trying to shock people you know oh you know put a big thing uh, on the video title you know which you know you cut what people call clickbait you know uh, breaking news or prophetic news or something like that just to get people to click on it to, to get a number you know because a lot of people do that on YouTube just to get a number and that's not the goal you know the goal is to bring the Word of God to help someone to encourage someone maybe get someone where they'll be sensitive to the Spirit of God that He's calling them, drawing their heart to an altar of repentance, maybe get them saved, plant a seed, someone else water, or vice versa. You know, it's not to shock people. It's about bringing the Word of God out there, too, you know, because there's plenty of bad stuff on YouTube. We need some more good stuff on YouTube, right? So, anyway, it it's, seems like it's started in my belly, <laughs> so to speak kind of rising up it seems like I don't know maybe the Lord's telling me say hey it's time maybe the people are starting to get a hunger and thirst for more of out of the box preaching and I've always said you guys have heard me say it many many times you know we try to put God inside this all our, our preconceived notions in this box and, and you know it's just the same you know, it's like you think you can say some of these things and <laughs> and it sounds okay in your head, but when you get ready to sing, you're saying, no, no, when I get ready to say it, it's almost like, well, if you say that, it's going to hurt somebody's feelings or make somebody mad. Uh, I think we need to start exploring new avenues if we want to you know hey if we want to get ready for some of the things that's coming people in the spiritual area and to be strong in the Lord and the power of his might like he wants us to spiritually there's stuff that we need to know that's coming as I said before, I think I said in the video before it doesn't need to be preaching and teaching in the same old fashioned, same old manner. Now, there's nothing wrong with that, the old fashioned way. We're supposed to find that path and walk therein. But there's, you know, I said there's things that God's Word tells us that's coming. And I believe there is a, a generation that's being reared up of preachers, teachers, watchmen that is out of the box, so to speak. I'm trying to find the right words for this, so don't, if I, if I mess up, please understand, I'm trying, you know. I'm trying not to say, I'm trying not to say we're anything or I'm anything special or anything like that, but, you know, uh, and, and it's, it's going to be hard. It's going to be hard to do it because, you know, most preachers are, are going to brush it aside. Some people are going to end up hating you uh, for bringing stuff out like that. Uh, might even be like, well, I'm not going to listen to him anymore because he's crazy. What he says is scaring me. I don't want to listen to stuff like that. What you know, I don't know. I don't know what the outcome is, but I firmly believe it. If you feel it in your spirit and your belly, and it's coming out, if it's of the spirit of God, it's got to come out. Um, and I don't know what all that's going to consist of, but uh, some of it I've I've preached and taught on before uh, in the past. Uh, and some of the Bible lightly teaches on and mentions. Um, 
and uh, you know it does say that uh, wisdom and knowledge increase in the last days uh, I don't believe that's just talking about modernistic things like you know automobiles planes computers and stuff you know it's a knowledge will increase and people run to and fro I, I believe that that's included in that so don't get me wrong uh, but I believe it's knowledge of things of the Word of God and things of prophecy and, and things that's going to happen here in the end times uh, you gotta understand the Word of God in it it, it 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 includes all of existence does it not I mean it, it, as I said it, it come from it come over from the other side of eternity you know and it doesn't I mean it's not a it's not a end all be all book of historical facts you know it doesn't tell us that the Civil War happened or the Revolutionary War happened or whatnot or something like that but it tells us everything that we need biblically to for salvation and how you know and all what we need for that and you know all the biblical facts that we need and spiritual uh, and all that but but I believe also that a lot of stuff has come out in these last days spiritually that we need to know it's almost like the whole the old tale of Pandora's box. Uh, and when it's open, you know you can't close it back. The knowledge is out there, and we've got to talk about it and bring it to the table. So that's been really kind of strong on my mind. I don't know how <laughs> all that's going to work out. Uh, I don't want to offend anybody. I certainly don't want to get up behind someone's pulpit that's a, a preacher's pulpit, a pastor's pulpit that's been kind enough to allow me to get up there and preach and solely it up. I mean, I know if it's the Spirit of God moving, it won't but because it's the Spirit of God is a gentleman, the Holy Ghost is a gentleman, he won't do that. Uh, but there again, the people. You know, the people have to be open to receive that's the thing I'm not I'm not putting everything on the people or blaming them so like I said please understand but some things people may not be ready to receive and I'm not putting people down that's kinda like when you say some people or it are ignorant I'm not calling people ignorant right now okay I'm just saying I'm using an example when you say someone is ignorant you're not calling someone a bad name when you say someone is ignorant about something they just they don't understand something or don't know the facts about something or don't understand something or don't know the definition of something they're ignorant to the facts that's not that that's not that's not a bad word they're just ignorant to something they don't know the facts about something right so that's not a bad word um, so we'll see uh, see how the Lord leads on that uh, so uh, even on here even on here uh, doing videos we'll see uh, and this is this may be where it starts and it may end up actually physically end up being brought behind the pulpit maybe starting at the word of life may and it may branch out from there uh, but I believe it's stuff that we have to know and be ready for. If not, uh, we're going to be in trouble. Except, you know, even in the Word of God, it said the spirit of Antichrist was already working back then. So, what point? It's so. What's at what point are we at now? That the spirit of Antichrist is working right now, and look at the shape. That some of the churches are in at this point. That's only the tip of the iceberg of what I'm talking about. So, uh, so I'm asking you guys to pray. I'm asking you guys that listen to me in these videos to pray that this word, whatever it is the Lord wants out, and that I feel like I have to get out that there's an opening and it gets out the way it's supposed to get out and that I don't 
<laughs> uh, open mouth and insert foot and do things my way, which is never good. <laughs> uh, it has to be the Lord's way, right? So I'd appreciate it if you'd do that for me. So uh, today uh, I'm going to start out, we're going to be in a couple books. Uh, first book, we're going to be in the book of Psalm 95 and... Uh, Let's start at verse 1 and read at least, I don't know, four or five verses. And then we're going to be in the book of Colossians. Uh, kind of still uh, feeding off of our uh, service we had Wednesday night. We had a marvelous service at the Word of Life uh, Wednesday night. It was a praise and worship and prayer service. <laughs> Hallelujah. I mean, the people were just being blessed, singing and just praising the Lord and uh, people getting their needs met and just praying and just uh, I was scheduled to preach and I I, I I got a couple of you know when you go to the house of God even even if it's a prayer a praise and worship and prayer service even at the end you know you still read two or three scriptures at least you always read some of the word of God and I, I couldn't, you know, I said I didn't want to overstep the Holy Ghost because we'd had a good service, but I still read two or three scriptures, and I still, I had to, I, I, for, for at least five minutes, I still, the Spirit of God was on me, and I still preached, you know, from the two or three scriptures I did, but then I come down, I said, okay, well, let's, <laughs> we'll, we'll stop it right there because I, I don't want to over go, overstep the, the Holy Ghost because it was a blessed service, and uh, I'm still feeding off that, and actually this the first scripture we want to read here uh well in the here in psalms all of them actually goes along with the service we had so uh uh man it was a good service holy ghost move mighty way but in uh, psalm 95 and verse 1 says oh come let us sing unto the lord amen let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation <laughs> Jesus is that rock, amen. Even back in the book of Psalm, the Psalm, Psalms, Son. And the Lord is that rock of our salvation. It's where we build. You know, you don't build that, you don't build anything on the shifting sands. There's a song about that, about shifting sands, I thought about. But also, but you don't, you don't build, you don't build a house, build a structure on, on, you know, you get a contractor in there that actually knows what they're doing and actually grades and, you know, build stuff on, on, on a, a solid rock. You don't build it in a swamp. You don't build it on the sand. You build it on solid ground on a good, you know, area where it's going to stand and uh, you know that's where we put our salvation on you know on the rock who's at the chief cornerstone who's at the Lord Jesus Christ amen and we can rely on that we can depend on that all the way to the end we just did a 10 minute scripture about Paul having that desire to depart but it was more needful for him to stay but he knew he knew when his time was up Whenever that was, when the Lord was finished with him, he knew the rock of his salvation. He knew that he was going to see the Lord Jesus when he was going to depart. Amen. But when we come get ready to go to the house of God, amen, let us have this spirit about us. Amen. Get ready to come into the house of God with a song on our heart and to make a joyful noise, to praise God the Lord. Because that's what we come to the house of God for, to lift him up in praise and worship. Amen. To be of one mind, one accord with our brothers and sisters in Christ. That way we can all worship the Lord. If you do that, the spirit moves and you will have a good service. Amen. That's just as they did when they were in all in one mind and one accord in the upper room when the Holy Ghost fell upon them and there were cloven tongues as a fire above their heads and amen they were speaking in tongues and all the men there of different countries all heard them speaking in each one in their own different languages so each one was hearing it gave it gave the name of the different countries but each person from a different country were hearing them speak in the own, their own language so that's you know hallelujah see that's that's 
that's a fraction. You know, that's that's the whole the Holy Ghost can still do that. Now I know we have different languages and we can learn different languages nowadays, but hey, somebody comes in the church, you know, only we'll, we'll say in these days, and this is not being racial and any, well, but say someone comes in that just speaks Mexican or something like that. Holy Ghost could still interpret that by use of the tongues. Absolutely he can. He's not lost any power. And we have him in us. We have the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Someone could have that and have the interpretation. Absolutely, it could happen. And in other ways. Holy Ghost moves. Prayer. Said, let them call for the elders of the church. They lay hands on them. Save the sick. Hallelujah. Make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Verse 2 says, let us come before his presence. Here we go. With thanksgiving. Have a thankful heart. Not come in bitter. Not come in angry. Well, I didn't get what I wanted today. I didn't do what I wanted today. I'm just aggravated, so I'm just going to sit here. Well, you know what? Sit there. Everybody else, let's get up and let's praise the Lord. Come into his presence with thanksgiving. Well, brother, that's awful harsh. Well, if you've already made up your mind, what can I do? I'm not going to come back there, grab you by the hand, and jerk you up the altar and say, you better praise the Lord. I can't do that. It's got to be within your heart. It's got to be within your soul that you're going to come in the house of God with thanksgiving and praise on your heart. Even before you hit the door, even when you're on your way to church, you have, get an expectation in your spirit that you're going to have a service, a wonderful service at night, a spirit and worship and praise of the preaching of the Word of God. If you if you even get to that point, which we did the other night, I did well a little bit after all the praise and worship and prayer and everything like that. But see, Holy Ghost takes over. I don't, you don't need to preach. He does all the work. Right? When we get up there to preach, he speaks through us. We're just the vessels. But if you have a service like that, you don't need to preach. And he comes in and moves and blesses people, heals people, delivers people. You don't need it. But you come in with thanksgiving. You're thankful. What are you thankful for? Hey, woke up this morning. Gave you breath of life. But if you're saved, you know what? Even if you didn't wake up, you're on the other side. You're with the Lord Jesus, just like we talked about Paul. He knew if he departed, hallelujah, he was going to be with the Lord Jesus. Amen. Glory to God. Before his presence with thanksgiving, come through that door saying praise the Lord. or Even if, even if you don't say it out loud or something like that in your heart, say praise the Lord and may it to the house of God one more time. You can praise him with song, lifting your hands up. You know, don't let the hands drag. Just sitting on the side. Lift them up once in, once in a while. Maybe one. Maybe two. Before long, you'll want to. Hallelujah. That, that'll get in your spirit, and you'll want to praise. Maybe even you'll want to run. Maybe you want to jump. Hey, it, it, but it's not all in that. It's not all in the, the, the hands and the run and the jump. It's in your heart. But if it gets in your heart, you'll want to do that. It says to make a joyful noise unto him with psalms. Make a joyful noise with singing. You know, you see people get up. They say, I don't know how, I don't know the the chord. And, you know, I'm just going to, don't worry about playing the instrument. I'm just going to sing this uh, a cappella without any music and everything like that. And I'm, I'm not a singer and everything. I'm just going to sing this for the glory of God. You know what? This is what's talking about. Doesn't matter. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord. That's your sacrifice right there of praise to the Lord. Doesn't matter if, if people say, I, you know, I can't carry a tune in a bucket. That's an old saying or something like that. It doesn't matter. If they're up there and that's in their heart and they pray, doesn't matter if they're not carrying a tune or whatever, that is their sacrifice to the Lord. And that may be more than some people may be doing. Some people may be sitting there hair lipped <laughs> the old saying not wanting to do anything I'm not trying to be hard on people I'm just saying when you come in the house of God be in expectation be prayed up be ready to worship the God worship God in spirit and in truth 
don't just come and sit there saying, oh, it's just, it's just going to be stuff as usual, just service as usual. Don't ever come to the house of God with that attitude. Come in there with expectation. Believing the Spirit's going to move. Maybe you're the one that's going to help get the Spirit moving. with all that but you know you just want to sit there come into his presence thanksgiving make a joyful noise sing the praises of God in verse 3 why do we do this why why do we do all this it says it right here there's many answers I could come up with. But right here it says it pretty much dead on, very eloquently. It says, For the Lord is a great God and a great king. Mark that word there. And a great king above all gods. So the Lord is a great God, upper G, and a great king above all gods, lower G. That's enough reason for me right there. <laughs> he saved my soul. He put me on that narrow path that leadeth to life everlasting. Where I intend to stay. But you got to have a desire. You got to have that desire to stay on that narrow path. Amen. The Bible says you got to have that desire. You got to run that race. You got to finish your course. You're just not. You're not going to slip and slide on a banana peel and just you know by accident slide into heaven. Ain't no sin going to enter heaven. Now let's go to the book of Colossians. Colossians uh, chapter 1, and we're going to start at verse 10. He is our king. Amen. Listen to what it says here. Colossians 1 and verse 10, it says, That ye might work. Oh, let me start again. Excuse me. That ye might walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing. Right there's one instance right there of it. We have to walk worthy of the Lord. That's part of that holy, set-aside, consecrated, narrow walk that we have to be on. We have to walk worthy of the Lord. What do we do if we're, if we're walking unworthy of the Lord? We're doing, we're doing stuff in the wrong, right? Maybe have some secret sins that no one knows about right offhand. The Lord knows about them. So you're walking unworthy. See, there's so many verses in here that a lot of these people, a lot of these preachers, a lot of these teachers, do not want anyone to read. They won't preach them. They won't teach them. They won't get anywhere near. They used to. The preachers used to hammer it. They put... They put Maybe, maybe thousands. I don't know. You know, I see these preachers today, and they have stadium, st a stadium full of people. I don't know how many, how many they hold, but stadium full. I guarantee you, some of these old, these old timey preachers, that entire stadium probably almost, almost every one of them would have some kind of conviction of heart if they was preaching. I know all we want to preach is just a fine, okay, you're okay doctrine. Do as, do as you will and the Lord loves you you're okay bless your little heart you're okay if you're saved and walking worthy of the Lord and the, that set apart walking on that narrow way then yeah you're okay and I believe uh, eternal security yes absolutely you're saved if you're walking worthy of the Lord if you're walking on that narrow way and a walk of holiness, as God's word says.
I mentioned earlier, that's why this Antichrist spirit has invaded the churches, and that's the other doctrine that's being preached. Just look at some of the doctrines that was being preached in the churches in the book of the Revelation. Doctrine of the Nicolaitans and uh, the doctrine of the, the Jezebel spirit and <laughs> these those churches were, were, yeah were back then but also mirror images of the churches that are here today. Any doctrine that you want, my goodness, you can find that'll please your flesh. That's the problem, is the people want to please the flesh. If it feels good, oh honey, we found the church. This feels good, the preacher didn't hold us too long, tells us we're okay, we can keep on doing what we want to, and we're okay, we're going to go to heaven. No walking in holiness, no repentance. We're, you know, just as long as we come in the door every Sunday morning, you know, and oh, how about that? We they don't they don't have a Sunday night service or Wednesday night service. As long as we make it, you know, every Sunday morning or maybe every other Sunday morning, you know, we'll be okay. As long as we come through that door. People, these doctrines are around. That's why I'm talking about to some some to to a certain extent of what I've been talking about, preaching some of this hard stuff. You're not going to be popular if you preach some of this stuff in some of these pulpits around here. Do I enjoy preaching this hard stuff on people? No, but if the Lord tells me I've got this is what I'm going to preach, then I'm going to preach it and teach it. To convict hearts so they can get right with the Lord and walk worthy of the Lord. Lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God. That is the day and age that we are living in right now. People are too busy in the service looking at their watch, looking at their phones, thinking of everything else except keeping their mind and their heart focused upon what the man of God is laboring to preach to them. And on the flip side, the man of God, he is looking at the clock back there or the watch that he set aside on the pulpit thinking well you know I need to I need to get these people out by 12 or they're going to start not liking me and try to get me kicked out of here all this is going on people this shouldn't be a surprise to a, a lot of you I, I'm not trying to be mean I'm just this is all this is going on You know, we need we need to be preaching. You know, heaven is sweet and hell is hot, and you know we need to. <laughs> once we get saved, we need to walk that holy walk, and there there is no fence riding. It's either you know you're hot or you're cold. If you try to fence ride, there is no such thing as fence riding. God is going to spew you out of His mouth. It says verse 10 that ye might walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing being fruitful in every good work yes you're going to have works after you're saved it's not the I've said many many times it's not the works that save us not the works that keeps us saved but you will repeat you will have good works after you become saved. Doesn't matter what good works. It could be any what you, good works. I don't know. Whatever the good works are. Helping somebody, leading somebody to the Lord, taking care of the widows, you know, helping people, you know. Think of good works. But you will have good works after you. You come to the Lord and you're saved. You will want to have good works. You will want to be fruitful. It says, and increasing in 
the knowledge of God. Oh, there we go. Oh, I, I, I desire. Don't you? I desire the knowledge of God. Pour it on me, Lord. As much as I can handle it. Don't you want the same thing? Why would you not want that? Well, I don't because uh, it because uh, I'll be held more accountable for everything. <laughs> That's the attitude of a lot of people. No, I don't want to know a lot because I'll be held more accountable the more I know. That, but honestly, that's that's that is the attitude of a lot of people. Toss away all that stuff, get the knowledge of God, start working for the Lord, walk worthy of the Lord, be fruitful, and have good works after you are saved. And in verse eleven, what he'll do it says, strengthen with all might according to his glorious power unto all patience and long suffering with joyfulness we got to be strengthened with might because the enemy is going to attack us going to oppress depress you know I say a lot because he does I know this to be a fact he does so we got to be strengthened with all might. Be stronger in the Lord and the power of his might. Amen. He said, according to his glorious power. It's his power, not ours. But also, we got to be, it says, unto all patience. And long suffering. Allow things to play out. Allow the Lord to work his will with joyfulness. The joy of the Lord is our strength. Amen. Now a lot of times stuff happens here and, and sometimes our joy gets addled a little bit. Amen? It does. Why? Because life sometimes will throw us a curveball. But we have a peace that God's Word tells us that we have. A peace that passeth all understanding. And everyone else is in disarray. But we're sitting there with that peace. He said, people don't understand that. I said, how, how can you be sitting there? Said, it's not me. It's the Lord giving me this peace. Because I have faith in him. That he knows what he's doing. And I place my faith in his hand. And he is going to work everything out. That's that peace that keeps you laid on that pillow at night when you go to bed knowing that everything is fine. Knowing if you don't wake up on this side of eternity in the morning, hallelujah, you're going to be with the Lord. That's awesome. In verse 12, here we are again, it says, giving thanks. It's a message really of thankfulness and thanks and worshiping the Lord. Giving thanks unto the Father which hath made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light. We're saints. After we become saints, we do it. God's Word tells us we are saints. We're to be called to be saints. We can't be called to be saints. We can't be saints if we're still going to be living and walking in sin. There, there are no sinning saints. I'm sorry to tell you people. There are none. Doesn't work. No such. To give thanks unto the Father. Because we have an inheritance. See, we have an inheritance in heaven. We are to lay our treasures in heaven. Where the thief can't come in and take it and rust, can't, you know, can't, can't corrupt, moth can't corrupt, you know, the corruption of this world like we like we understand can't, you know, it gives us the example. these last two here. And I think we're going to go ahead and close. I feel, I feel like these are the last two that we're supposed to read. In verse 13 he said, 
who hath delivered us from the power of darkness. Mm. Mm, that's awesome. And hath translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. <laughs> We're part of the kingdom. Hallelujah. Part of the kingdom of God because of what the Lord did. Verse 14, because of this, in whom we have redemption through his blood, the Son. The Son of God, the Lord Jesus Christ. Even the forgiveness of sins. How do we get that forgiveness of sins? Well, the Lord is calling you, is drawing you. See, it said, let, unless the Spirit draws you, there's no salvation. If the Spirit is convicting your heart and drawing you to salvation, repentance, repent with all your heart from the sins you've committed. Now, we know you can't name everything that you've ever committed, every sin you've ever committed, but you just ask the Lord to forgive you for every sin that you've ever committed. Ask the Lord to forgive you for the sins you've committed and to come into your heart to take up abode there. You'll serve Him the remainder of your days. Believe that He died on that cross some 2,000 years ago that his body was laid in that broad tomb and on that third and appointed day he arose he resurrected victorious over death, hell, sin and the grave and through asking for forgiveness of sin and ask him to save you from those sins and to come into your heart. Take up a boat there and to be your savior, to turn your life over to him, for him to come into your heart and take up a boat there. You're saved. He's your savior. As I always say, it's confession is made unto salvation. You become a new creature in Christ. Make a public declaration. Tell people that you are saved now, that you asked the Lord to save you and he saved you. you may gain others, your family, your friends. If you backslidden on the Lord, come back to him. You know it's the right way. You may have hit a snag somewhere, the enemy may have laid a snare and you may have hit it and you walked away. Something happened. Come back to the Lord and repent and get back in the will of God. If you're sick, call upon the name of the Lord and He can heal you. Amen. So, pray for one another, exhort one another, lift one another up in prayer. Let's pray for the churches. Uh, let's all pray for our families, our friends, the sick and afflicted, of course the backslidden, the unsaved, that they come back to the Lord and come to the Lord before it's everlasting, too late. Let's pray for our country, you know, for our nation, for, <laughs> uh, it's a lot to pray about, Aunt. Uh, but, <laughs> uh, we thank the Lord for all he's done, all he's doing. Uh, let's just pray for all of our brothers and sisters in Christ here and abroad around the world that are suffering true persecution and tribulation that are hazarding their life for the faith. Amen. And uh hope you got something out of the message today. I did. It was not because of me, because it was the Word of God, the Spirit of God. Amen. Amen. So, uh, oh, give you our address here. <laughs> uh, Word of Life Church at <laughs> 1516 Midway Road, Straw Plains, Tennessee, 37871. And uh, give our service times. We have Sunday school at 10 a.m., worship service at 11 a.m. Come back at 6 p.m. for our evening service. And we also have midweek service Wednesday at 7 p.m. So make plans. Come out and be with us for service. And uh, we have a, I don't have the paper handy with me right now, but uh, next uh, video I will try to grab that paper <laughs> and uh, give the uh, date out. But we have a, uh, 
fellowship meeting this month at uh, New Seasons Church of God. Uh, like I said, I can't remember the address offhand, but I'll get in the next video I do. And uh, of course, we got Vacation Bible School coming up in July, and we'll give you the dates for that and everything. Uh, you can look back two or three videos, and I'll have, the dates will be on there because I gave them out, but uh, I'll give them out again as soon as possible. But anyway, uh, God bless you. Each and every one of you, blessings in Christ Jesus on each and every one of you. And uh, as always, be prayer warriors. Meet me on that battlefield of prayer. Let's win some battles. Amen. War is won, so let's win some battles on that spiritual battlefield. Amen. Amen. All right. Take care, and we will see you guys next time. Bye now.